Well, hello everybody and welcome to tonight's stream. As you can see, I finally got the camera rings mysteriously gone from the camera. No more layer lines. They're gone now. No more. So hopefully everybody's doing great today. We are getting ready to play with the Battlestar Galactica once again. And this time I think you will be very much happier with what you see. Um, I know I am. <laughs> um, because I went back to the painting square and uh, I've done some work on the holocolor. Uh, I am very much happier with it. Although it is not anywhere near screen accurate um, with the colors that I've chosen. And, you know, in all honesty, looking at the colors and that kind of stuff, the screen accuracy versus it looking good. I'm going to go with the looking good. Um, I don't like white. White is not one of my favorite colors to work with. It can be one of the most annoying colors to work with. Um, I'll give kudos to white and yellow for that um, being kind of a pain in the butt color. So kind of keep that. They're not my favorites. Just, just putting it out there. But hopefully everybody's doing great, uh, having a good week. If you are, let us know in the chat that you're having a good week. And uh, let's get this, get this ship out here in front of you. Nope. Yeah, there we go. So you guys can see, I've definitely taken it back to more of a gray. So initially it was more of this bluish gray, which I didn't care for, but it's still there. You can still see it in the color, which was intentional. And then also you can still see a good amount of the dark silver. Um, I know I had a few comments last week that people thought I was over spraying it which in actuality, I was spraying it for into a purpose to give that darkened detail in the crevices, which is exactly how it set in um, and gave us a very good, I'm a ship, I've been used, and, you know, gave it a wear, a wear look, which is what I was after with it. So this is definitely starting to come together. Um, kind of giving the other view here, you can definitely kind of see more of the detail starting to pop out. Pronto Wisco Pepper Jack is my favorite type of cheese. So, <clears throat> um, but you can see it's definitely starting to come more together. And today we're going to give this, this ship a, uh, a, uh, a bit more of a, uh, a color is what we're after. And by color, I mean we're going to start working on the reds. So, and I'm actually going to pop over to a different screen here. I was finding a bunch of the photos from the actual Battlestar when they were making it. I was doing a lot of, I was, I was, I was researching to find kind of good paint colors. And, you know, when I look at these pictures the red and the white are definitely the colors that kind of pop out of it. And with an FDM three print, two things could possibly happen here. The red can just go on beautifully or it can go into layer lines and go crazily. Um, and red and white can be two really annoying colors. But um, I was just kind of surfing around looking at different images um, like here the red is not even prominent at all you can't even tell it's really there um, but then there's another image where the red is very prominent and very pronounced so um, and I was kind of doing some research for back on the engines um, to kind of give it a look but if you look at this one there's very little red compared to what you see in the photos and so I was kind of taking this kind of a judge of where I kind of wanted to go with the mechanical looks of the ship. So I'm trying to kind of figure out and kind of gauge how I want to do this um, and how I want to make this red look good. So, um, but yeah, without further ado, let's start getting some red on the ship's nose. Um, and we are going to actually break out. Um, I know I've been asked before, guys, 
a lot of the brushes I use are from ZenBrush. Um, I'll put a link down in the description. Uh, these guys make some of the most awesome brushes. So um, definitely worth your time um, when it comes to a paintbrush. brush them after here without bending it. Uh, got it. All right. Give it a little bit of distilled water. Soften up our bristles. And for the reds, I'm going to start with a base Mephesto red from Citadel. Is the red that I'm going to kind of start choosing with as we start kind of laying more of these colors into the uh, into the print and if you guys are curious the gray that is comprising the most of the main hull hull is uh, Tamiya or Tamiya depending on who where and who you say it but the base color for the hull now is uh, Tamiya's XF19 sky gray it goes on really well comes out really well um, and it didn't really take much of my airbrush to do a lot of what you see here. So um, really good color. Um, all honesty, it's, a it's just a really good overall base color to work with. I'm using an angled brush. Um, this is a Zem WG-11. It works really, really well. And especially since I am working on an FDM print. Um, the nice thing about the Citadel paint is it's a little thicker, so it doesn't tend to run into the layer lines, which can be a huge, huge help when laying down this paint. And Citadel is, especially when you're doing a base color like this, Citadel is really good for coverage. It works really, really well for its coverage. And hopefully you guys enjoyed last week's video where I discussed the uh, Creality CRM4. Um, let me tell you, I'm having a blast with that printer. Um, Unfortunately, it kind of had to move to a different room, so we won't be playing with it tonight, but I am getting some excellent prints out of it. Um, probably have a follow-up video here in the next week. Um, if you guys are interested in the, more of my thoughts on that printer, because it is, it is impressive. Um, it's hard to convince me to like auto bed leveling but this printer is actually kind of convincing me to like auto bed leveling. Uh, <laughs> actually, I am going to do this real quick. Where'd my mouse go? All right, there's my mouse. I am going to grab that and pull it more over to where I can see it. And we'll go back to the side view here and we'll start getting some more color on there. Um, I just kind of need more of the reference, uh, the reference so I can see where I'm actually applying color. And actually, I'm going to apply a little bit of mask uh, to help me kind of give a straighter line. But all in all, oops, don't do that. I'm trying to just kind of pull some color into the ship.
I'm going very lightly with not a lot of paint because I don't want the paint to seep under the tape line. But the tape line should help me get a much better initial straight edge. And it's okay if this seems too bright because we can easily dull this down. So. that kind of dry a little bit because I can always come back with the XSF XF 19 and uh, kind of chill this one down so um, kind of a perk of the game there all right I am kind of not feeling the Mephisto red so um, I probably will come back and darken it. But I may I may leave this as the base coat and darken it with uh, um, weathering. Because I don't intend this to be a pristine battle star. This is gonna be a battle star that's seen some stuff. <laughs> There we go. Starting to get some of that front color line on there. One of the things I was noticing too is looking at some of the pictures that I had pulled up. Um, the red does extend back here on top of the dome, so what I will do is I will make a basically a sticker that will let me do that yellow line. Um, sometimes I even just take like a dime and make that work, but also back here there's red going across several of these. So we definitely got some red to put in. I want to go through and kind of darken in here. I'm going to do that with the airbrush, but you guys can see where the dark silver plays into darkening those mechanical parts. Um, I know, like I said, I, some people complain I went too heavy with it, but you can see where it's still under the XF-19, giving that, that, that contrast, um, which is what I was truly after with, the, with, that, with that paint. But this one, for that groove line, I'm gonna have to brush, paint, brush it in. 
brush, brush, brush it in. Wah, 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 wah. Oh, well. <laughs> so how's everybody doing tonight that's out there? Uh, appreciate the thumbs up. If you are watching, make sure you hit that uh, thumbs up button. That does help us out. Oh, well, before I hop into another color, I want to get your guys' impact input on possibly another ship to bring onto the channel. So we all know I'm a Warhammer fan. And I resin printed this Contender Battle Barge. Would you guys like to see me paint this on here? It's resin. It's really got some heavy details in it. Um, I need to do some cleanup on it still. It's still got some, uh, some support pieces that just need to be cut away with the Sonic Saber. But it honestly could turn out to be a really awesome project, um, especially with as small as it is um, and the detail level that we could take it to. Um, I do plan to have this primed by the next stream. Leave me a note down in the comments if you guys want to see me build this one or paint this guy out uh, here on the channel. And that comes to the other thing you may have noticed is, well, actually that wasn't a good one. My paint booth doubled in size. So I was noticing I was having problems with, uh, well, like the Galactic, I couldn't fit it in there. Um, judging by the size and the weight of the filament, it took at least a spool. Um, if not a spool and a half to print this one, but I also, it's fairly heavy. This was back when I was first getting started, so it probably has more infill than it needs. So you probably could get away with a spool of filament on this guy and still get it, get it, uh, printed out very nicely. So, um... That would be kind of my guesstimate if I had to remember how to do it because I did print this like three or four years ago. Um, but yeah, it's about a spool, if not more, um, because it was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pieces. So it's really about eight prints to uh, get it printed out. But and if you look at the comments from, I think it was last week's stream, um, the link to the file is out there. That may have been you that asked me for it. Um, but it's out there. It's available. Um, honestly, it's a gorgeous print. Um, I really like the way it looks. Um, I'm almost tempted to print it again just to see how I've changed in my printing skills. Um, I'm just not quite sure I want to go down that road right now with everything I've got um, going on because, and I'll, I'll show, the CRM4 is doing great. This is a piece of a project I printed off of it. It's doing really, really well. I'm getting clean, consistent prints now. The prints are staying on the build plate. Uh, that was my initial problem. I couldn't get it to stick to the build plate. Who knew Z offset was such a pain in the butt but it can be um, to, get, to get it going. But you can definitely see um, the difference in the grays. I've knocked the bluish down. Um, the XFS-19 really kind of helped out with the color, um, bringing it back into a more, more kind of style ship, so. Hopefully that answered your question, 69 Eliminator. Um, especially this old Battlestar is always, always a great, great model. Um, especially when it came out, because if I remember right at the time, it was one of the most expensive TV shows. Uh, it had the largest budget of TV shows at that time. You guys can see how masking can be very helpful on getting those colors laid down. Um, but yeah, we got some we got some more detailing and some more off gray work I want to do to this. But definitely, guys, let me know if you want to see the contender. Um, I'm honestly gonna paint it anyway because it's just it's Warhammer, and you don't see the ships anywhere to purchase. So that really kind of made me sit there and look at it. And go, I kind of want to print that, and then of course. 
we got good old Babylon 5 Star Furies playing around. And this is another project that I've been working on over on the modeling channel. Uh, getting ready to come out. He's still very much a work in progress. Um, but he's all just base colors right now. He's not any layering, nothing. This is all just base colors um, that I've put onto the model after a primer, of course, um, to really kind of start bringing him into focus a little bit and start really kind of making a really neat Primaris uh, librarian. I love this figurine. Um, I think the figurine itself is like 35 bucks, but I've got it for a pretty good little deal um, in one of the Warhammer magazines. Uh, just kind of one of those fun things that's out there to work on. So, but I'm going to play with some grays um, and actually... Got to grab some other colors. Yeah, I mean, scale it down a little bit. I'm pretty sure I probably scaled this one down from what that file is. So um, scaling down, you do what you got to do to get the model you want to make it fit. Um, I mean, you guys saw how crazy I went with that Pegasus, that Mercury class. Um, I won't be doing that anytime soon <laughs> again. Um, and it's just kind of ironic that this one was kind of sitting, um, sitting here at the house. All right, where's my Sotar? All right. Kind of start getting in here with some other grays. So I want to pull out. So it doesn't look like I'm adding much, but I, I really actually am adding in some darker light gray in here. Kind of giving the ship hull a little bit of detail. pulling some of the shades back out um, to kind of give the hull a little bit of a little bit of transparency and depth and for that I'm just using army painters uh, uniform gray uh, this is their air paint and I do like it it works really really well especially when I'm kind of trying to weather um, which is essentially what I'm starting to do here. It 
to just give some weathering effects to the hull here. So you can see how I'm kind of adding that contrast level and bringing that, that pull into the ship. kind of giving different components a little bit of stretch, a little bit of wear. Um, especially on the mechanic components. It definitely kind of adds a layer to the, to the model. That's what I'm kind of doing at the moment is just kind of adding a little bit of layer, a little bit of light. So basically just giving it a little bit of flesh and content. I know it's kind of maybe probably hard to hear me over the compressor and I do apologize, but the compressor is a necessary tool. Um, even though I've got a fairly good size one. Move back along the engine line here. So you guys can kind of tell, the airbrush is making real quick work of this. And this is a SOTAR 2020 um, that works really, really great. I'm gonna change up a little bit to some Vallejo light gray. This is also their model airline. So it's already thinned down. It's ready to go on the airbrush um, to really kind of give some nice contrast. Um, actually, we're going to just kind of Uh, no, it did not have a stand, unfortunately. At least the one that I got did not. Um, but there's all kinds of stands out there. Uh, I'm not even sure how to say your name. Um, but definitely check out the description down below. Um, or not the description, in some of the comments of the last week's video. Um, for, uh, for the model itself.
which you guys can see just by coming in with the airbrush like I have, I'm creating that tone look. Um, and yeah, I got it on my red a little bit. Eh, what we do, red's red. That'll be a quick, real, real quick repaint. But I'm using the different grays to create an effect. Along with the dark silver being deep in there, it makes those all kind of pop out. Um, which is kind of the intended design here. And I want to get, I want to get this thing on its side. So we have done zero work on the bottom. And I want to start working on that. Whoops. And creating that opposite color here. Repoint the camera. switch back to the bit darker gray start kind of coming in here and kind of the recessed parts with the darker kind of give this underlying effect All right, so I purposely muted there to kind of not blow out your eardrums with everything that I'm working on. But so that's kind of the way we're going here. As you guys can see, I'm creating that tinged look um, with multiple grays to basically make the ship look like it's seen its days in space. Now, right now I'm just cleaning my airbrush. With this, right now I'm just using distilled water. Kind of. Rinse out as much of the paint as I can. I could use the distilled water to create a very thin, uh, watery layer over it. Um, I'm liking what I'm seeing so far, so I don't really want to spray it that way. Um, I just didn't want to hurt your eardrums because I turned on the, uh, the blower to suck uh, some of this uh, stuff out of my, out of my, out of even my airway here because. I don't want to inhale this stuff. All right, I am looking for, where did I put? I reorganized my desk a little bit, guys, sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to find certain things and I just don't see them. Uh, 
because uh, I added in the second paint booth. Um, so I kind of had to reorganize around a little bit, move some stuff, um, so stuff could actually fit on the desk. There we go. There we go. That's looking much better. But basically, I chose three grays, um, and I create, well, really a gray and a metallic. And I created a layered effect to give the ship kind of a worn look. Um, hey, SDM, how's it going? I am actually kind of really kind of starting to struggle because there's not, other than the highlighted details, this model is kind of color-wise blah. So, but I'll come up with some awesome detail look. All right, got my paint airbrush cleaned up, so he's happy. Don't want to mess up the airbrush. That's the last thing you want to mess up, especially that one. But, I'll pull it back out of the booth here. You can see now those grays laid down and they've dried and they've created kind of this wash color effect over the ship to give it a weathered look. They're close in color, but they're just enough off to create a hue. And the camera is not doing it any justice, but that hue gives the ship very much a... Uh, a I've been out in space kind of look. You can really kind of see it here where I wound up creating it because I brought the co darker color close into the into the ridge line. And I, on the ridge line, I came back with the lighter color because where's the wear going to happen? At, right here at this edge. Um, it's not really going to happen as much down in here. So I'm trying to simulate that wear, wear look. So definitely kind of filling in looking pretty good to me it's starting to look really good i'll touch back up the reds um and i'll work on the red coin piece but all in all she's starting to look very much like a battle star I'll tell you what i'll throw it out there guys especially those that are watching what's its name or do we just actually want to name name this one the galactica uh you guys let me know in the comments and in the chat. Let me know what you want to name it. Um, I'm open to interpretation. So do we want this to be the actual Galactica or do we want to call this the Atlantia or one of the other ones that were destroyed um, in the first episode? Because um, that was kind of one of those things. These guys got, I don't know. Okay, let's throw out here, Battlestar Galactica. Which version was the more cataclysmic wipeout? Um, and by wipeout, I mean, who died worse? Um, I mean, at least in the original series, from my point of view, the fleet was lured out and their pilots were caught off guard, but the fleet put up a fight where in the remake, it was more of a coming up on enemy ship up. Oh, they're dead. Um, there really wasn't that much of a fight except for the Galactica herself. So kind of a, kind of a trivia there thrown out there. Um, let me know which one you guys think was the, uh, the worst defeat for mankind. Cause personally, I think, I think it was the new one. I mean, we didn't even get, they didn't even get a chance to fight really. And it was over where the other one, this old 1978 version we had the chance to fight. We trusted somebody. They got us killed deliberately. But our ships were there. In, and uh, yeah. Kind of a interesting thought process there. I'm kind of throwing down a little bit. Boy, I can tell I'm getting tired today. My hands are not playing ball. So... So I try to, the Achilles, that's an interesting name. 
I actually like that one. It makes me think of the Achilles class in Star Trek. Uh, I think it was Star Trek The Dominion War. They showed that ship and it just came in and just had like 12 torpedo launchers on her back. <laughs> um, but uh, no, I, I'm, that's an interesting one. But I do intend only to run this Battlestar probably one more episode. So. Now we're starting to see the color kind of fit. It's this dome that I keep talking about with the color. I kind of want to do more metallic into the back. Yeah, 69, I, I kind of agree. Um, I mean, the remake... Uh, maybe. Now, 69, the key about that that Pegasus that's sitting back there um, that I built a while back, I'm actually going to put that up for sale. Um, so that one's going to go up on my site here probably pretty soon and uh, let her go to a good home somewhere else. Oh, yeah, Commander Kane. That that episode in the original BSG series was that set of, was it one episode or set of episodes? I mean, it was just fantastic um, watching him show up and the actor that they chose to portray him. I thought they did a really good job um, portraying, portraying Kane um, as a flamboyant man because the actor that they chose from, I don't even remember his name, he was just right for that role um um because i mean the other stuff he did in like hot shots and all that was just really really good sorry guys i know it was out of shot i'm just kind of putting some detail back into the red that i kind of grayed up here and that shot really kind of does show what i was doing with the airbrush um with the different hues kind of popping, kind of creating that weathered effect um, that, you know, stuff has kind of come over the hull and uh, indinged it down. So. Probably what I'm going to do soon is start looking at, um, some panel lining into it to kind of make the panel line pop out a little bit more. All in all though, when it comes to this model, we're almost done. Um, there's some more red effects to go in, uh, some areas where I'm going to come in with some black maybe. And I mean, all told this month, oh, I almost stuck my hand in a bottle of red paint. That would have been funny blooper for today. That would have been a, uh, that would have been a, uh, yeah, I, I probably would have earned that for that one. So, um, yeah, that would have been kind of poopy, but hopefully you guys are enjoying it. Um, I am looking for a new idea of a new ship to print um, that we might even be able to feature the CRM4 to print. So kind of keep that in mind there. Definitely throw that down in the comments because we've done... The Pegasus, we've done this version of a Galactica style Battlestar. Um, we could do the remake Galactica, but I'm kind of honestly, I'm starting to kind of burn out a little bit on Battlestar. Uh, so I may need to run over and do something else for a little bit, a little bit. Um, and maybe jump back and do like a Cylon Base Star or a Cylon Fighter, which honestly, I need to put some more time in on this guy as well because it's coming together um i actually thought about throwing this guy in the resin taking the same model that i used for this one and throw it in the resin printer uh because my 
Sonic Mega 8K can handle this size of a print um, and give me a lot cleaner, smoother, uh, smoother model. So I'm kind of curious to see how that can go. I need to do a lot more detailing, like in the engine pods there. Uh, the back burners, they need to go into a gray. The white needs to be finished and cleaned up and just, yeah, this one's even almost done. And then come in and do, I want to leave the red. The yellow is a base coating for kind of bronzing uh, brass to come into this one. So um, still one I need to work on. Uh, <laughs> working on stuff and finding the time. That's always a struggle, isn't it, guys? Just finding time to work on something and get it going, especially um, with managing two channels now, it's definitely getting more and more uh, more difficult. And I'm trying to find a time that if it, I, I have a feeling it's gonna be on a weekend that you guys wanna watch me, you know, paint these over on the model channel. So this guy is just in base colors. I haven't done any layering to him yet. I'm already stoked to get to that to get to that level of of layering, get the blue glow on his power blade, and all that kind of stuff. But just kind of one of those things that just hasn't fallen into the way line yet. I need to kind of get there. But I also just noticed the time we are kind of coming up on the end. Um, stay tuned for coming up. Definitely another video on the CRM4 is coming because that machine is doing really well. Um, you know, it's basically to me looks like a larger version of an Ender 3S1 Pro. The hot end's a little different. The extruder and the mechanics all look almost identical, except there are some very big differences between the two. One being I can get the CRM4 to work. My Ender 3S1 Pro has just been disappointment, um, as in blob. Um, so it's kind of one of those things I got to... I got to definitely kind of keep working on um, getting that printer in the shape. The M4, like I said, and this is a project I'm working on, um, a, to me, a paint rack. So this is kind of the first pieces. But, I mean, that looks fantastic once I kind of, I've been narrowing down the profile using this this one because the settings that, uh, that, uh, originally came with it I have not been thrilled with and my inland PLA was not thrilled so I'm working on building up my profile and we'll share that profile of course if anyone asks once I have it going which will probably be by the time I release the second video on there I um, still need to talk about the Creality Sonic pad unfortunately that was attached to the Ender 3S1 Pro that is now awaiting parts uh, <laughs> Buck Rogers how about the Thunder Fighter or whatever they called those fighters. I can definitely look into that. Yeah, Lloyd Bridges. Yes, Lloyd Bridges was awesome. Uh, I really loved it when he, you know, movies like Hot Shots, what was it, Airplane he was also in. Uh, a lot of really good movies there. So definitely a cool one. But I'll take a look for that Thunder Fighter from Buck Rogers because you're not the first one to say Buck Rogers either. And I'll be honest with you, I don't think I've done a Buck Rogers video. So I will definitely go looking for something on that. And, uh, probably print it in resin so we can get a really awesome paint job um, on top of that one. And guys, definitely, if you're watching this and you made it that far and you've not, hit that subscribe button. As always, hit that like button and definitely leave your comments down below. Let me know you were here by throwing a suggestion of a new ship or model or vehicle or um, I'm not even opposed to a figure of trying to work on because I've got a couple out there from Wicked that I've printed and probably deserve some work from my side. Um, so definitely going to work on that. This guy is going to be coming pretty near to a close, probably some nameplate, a little bit more metallics into it. And you guys can, as it's drying here, you can really kind of, you're starting to see like on this flight pod, the weathering of the multiple grays is really kind of starting to pop and show through um, and kind of really kind of given accent to the details um, in the model, which is, was the entire goal of showing you me doing that different grays and kind of going with the contours to create that. So also, um, I do have an inner three I need to repair. I'm thinking about bringing that to a live stream and, uh, let you guys watch me fix it here. So definitely kind of one of those things. Definitely let me know if you want to see this contender battle cruiser painted on here. Um, 
from Warhammer. Uh, I'm actually kind of stoked just to paint this because um, it's a Warhammer ship and I've never painted one before. So I'm kind of curious to see how this will go. Um, but yeah, definitely an interesting different take on painting and probably it can be very ornate or we can go very simple. So kind of a lot of fun with that. And I'm definitely thinking about upping the size of the Star Fury here and doing a start another an actual resin Star Fury build. I've got a white star resin print printed in resin over there, but I can't seem to get it to put together right. I'm having to do a lot of Sonic Saber work and stuff seems kind of warped. Um, so I'm kind of working on that too, because a white star would be a pretty awesome paint paint job to do with an airbrush. I mean, that's a lot of purple, a lot of greens and some yellows in there too, but it would be a pretty fun one too. So, but if there's a sci-fi series you're interested in, definitely let me know. I appreciate everybody for coming out tonight. And with that, I'm gonna say have a good night. We'll see you guys in our usual video on Friday. And hopefully you've been catching the shorts that I've started putting out every day. Um, talking about the new CRM fours, projects, fails. Um, I do share my print fails and all that kind of stuff out there as well. Uh, Cause I'm human and I have them too, just like everybody else. So uh, definitely one of those things, but always, as always, if you got a 3D printing question, let me know. And we will see you guys in the next stream next Tuesday. And hopefully we'll start getting a stream for the model channel going on the weekends. So thank you guys. Have a good one. Have a great blessed week. See you next time.